Good morning and welcome to Rising. We have a great show for you today. Robbie, what do we have? Max Alvarez and Philip Wegman are in for Team Rising and will be with us to discuss the Trump's, Trump's allies ganging up on Congressman Katko after his vote for the bipartisan infrastructure bill. And we'll get into today's vote to censure Congressman Gosar after a violent video that depicted him killing AOC and President Biden that he shared on Twitter. But first, Pfizer has requested emergency authorization from the FDA for its antiviral COVID treatment after a study found the pills to significantly reduce hospitalizations in infected COVID patients. The Biden administration plans to buy 10 million courses of Pfizer's antiviral pill as regulators still weigh whether to clear the medication. According to NBC, the contract has not yet been finalized. Data released so far detailed treatment only for people who are unvaccinated, and it is unclear whether the FDA would approve the drugs for people who are vaccinated. Well, okay, do it for the unvaccinated then quickly. <laughs> right, get, mean, to, get to work, guys. Um, you know, the story, so much of the story of the pandemic has been the FDA, it's the CDC dragging their feet on various approvals, various things we all know, things people are doing anyway. People are already getting booster shots, by the way. They're not right. waiting for permission to do so. Um, some states have actually gone ahead and just mm -hmm. said, go do it. Uh, and also, there, nobody checks, so you can just do it if you want. Um, it's, uh, I don't know, the, the, the FDA's sort of imperious, we are in charge of deciding when you get to do this, even though we all know eventually all these things are going to be approved. Eventually, it's, it's, everyone's going to be able to take boosters, get the, get the, this pill if you're really sick. So, like, if we know we're going to get to that stage, right. why wait? Yeah, the FDA is like, look, we call the shots around here, not yeah. the pandemic. Who, what, does, what does this virus <laughs> think it's doing? <laughs> we are the FDA. They're not meeting until, uh, you know, November 30th to talk about uh, Manupovir, the, like, Merck one, which ha also is similarly effective. Uh, among people who have, you know, if, it's, if you catch your infection early enough, take these pills, you're finding that, you know, sig really significant effectiveness in keeping you out of the hospital and keeping you from dying. What, November 30th? Like, right. come on. What? <laughs> Not like there's an emergency. And we've known about this for weeks. Like, a thousand people plus are going to die in the United States today. Yep from COVID. And so, okay, the FDA wants to check the data on how it interacts with the vaccine. Okay, fine. Go, go ahead and do that. We know what the effect is after you have COVID and after you have mo moderate symptoms. Right. So, and this is, this is a, a treatment that can uh, help people who have moderate symptoms. As they, they, like, so their survey showed like, you know, in their control group, something like, what, what we have the numbers here, somewhere 20, there were 27 hospitalizations and seven deaths in the, in the control group. They got nothing. And on the other, there were like three hospitalizations and no Zero deaths. deaths. Yeah. So how, how many of those, how, how many times do you want to multiply that seven? Right. Over and over and over again until you can, everybody can sync their calendars my, and, and meet up to talk about this. November 30th? Exactly. Like, I, I, my, uh, one of my colleagues, Ronald Bailey, he's a science correspondent at Reason Magazine, where I also uh, work and write, and he was in Glasgow for the, uh, for the conference, and he said he just was handed a packet of tests, free COVID tests. Mm -hmm. You can get you can just You can get it for right. free there. Um, right, because that's good public health. <laughs> right. Right. F FDA, the test that the FDA is, well, they'll maybe get to approving eventually. Maybe for the right. next pandemic. Maybe. Right. And, and the FDA had some weird kind of public health concerns about uh, approving these tests that, well, they might not be perfectly effective enough or y your, your, right. your antibody load might not be high enough so that it might not catch it yet, but you're eventually going yeah. to be contagious and so you're going to take a test and it's going to come back negative. England thinks it's fine, but our FDA knows better. And, right. It, it's just they're, they're trying to out-clever right. the pandemic instead of just throwing the, you know, the best technology that we have at it. Well, just last week, Biden nominated former Obama administration alum Robert Califf to lead the FDA. The move comes as the agency weighs a series of decisions that will, that will determine the direction of Biden's vaccine campaign, as well as handle scrutiny of the FDA's approval process. The agency is planning to authorize Pfizer, Bio, and Tech's booster doses for all adults this week, as we were just discussing. Right now, at least 30 to 40 percent of vaccinated adults are not eligible for boosters. 
according to the official people. Meanwhile, Business Insider reports that experts have opposing views on whether or not people should take antibody tests before getting booster shots. Some virologists say that antibody levels could help decide who is more at risk from COVID, while Dr. Fauci and the FDA have said that testing antibodies can be crude and continue to oppose testing antibodies as a way of checking people's protections. I, I mean, this makes absolutely no sense from Dr. Fauci. Now, I get that it is true that the antibodies is not the only indication of protection. It is mm -hmm. theoretically possible that you know, there are other elements of the protect the T cells, other things. So you, you could still have protection, even if your antibody levels are not testing right. as high as you'd like. <clears throat> but again, the perfect is the enemy of the good. So we, we, we can we could have a good idea about whether your protection is waning if we, we checked your antibody level, certainly you should be able to do that. So again, I think this, just like you said, out clevering, right. Dr. Fauci wants to- Once again, yeah. once again, they're, they're right. They're, they're worried that if people can get these antibody tests and, and show that they had COVID recently, and right. that, that then they won't get the vaccine. And so everything is geared around kind of this, this one push in this, in this one, one direction. So yeah, trying to out clever it. And, and now I, I get one thing that, that they argue is that your levels don't tell you everything. And, and yes, of course, that's true. Absolutely true. And just because you have low antibody levels, you know, doesn't necessarily mean you don't have good protection because immunization comes from your body being able, you know, learning, right. you know, how to respond to this. So even if the antibodies have relaxed a bit, you still have that immuno memory so that when the virus comes back, it's like, oh yes, I remember that, you know, marshal the antibodies, like get, get, them, get them moving. I'm sure I butchered the, the science of that, like, you know, six ways from Sunday, <laughs> but that, that's essentially what's going right. on here. And ultimately, yeah, uh, Fauci's just worried that it's gonna push more people to say, well, I guess I don't need the vaccine. But, and, and what if, but why does he think it's that? What if there are people who had COVID and are uh, you know, riding the natural immunity high horse and they get an antibody test and they found out, oh, actually, well, I, I guess I had COVID a longer time ago than I thought and right. my immunity has waned and my antibodies aren't as high as I thought. Maybe I exactly. will go get vaccinated exactly. now. Who's to say that wouldn't happen? Fauci is not inside anybody's head. That's, right. that's the He's problem. He's not a psychologist. <laughs> right, that's the problem with trying to outthink this. Yeah. Is that no, nobody knows everything. Exactly. So Biden's vaccine or test mandate has made it to the sixth court of appeals. Uh, nearly three dozen lawsuits have been filed in multiple federal courts, triggering a lottery to consolidate the cases before one single court. The Cincinnati-based the Cincinnati court has 16 judges. Eleven were appointed by Republican presidents, six by Trump. Three judges will initially hear the case. However, the court is unlikely to make the final call. The losing side can request a rehearing and a Supreme Court review. And, and it's a lottery to determine which of those, which three uh, hear it. It's not, they're not selected, I don't believe. It's a, uh, right. That's so, how the so courts work. If, and if you have, you know, if it's two to one Republicans, the statistics are it's going to be a right. two to one Republican court. But also it depends on who the Republican is that, you know, yeah. as, especially among the older people, uh, this doesn't map as cleanly along ideological lines. It, it, like a lot of a lot of educated, uh, you know, college educated, obviously law school educated um, uh, Republicans who are over 60, 70 years old have a different attitude right. uh, toward, toward the vaccine than, you know, people 50 years younger than them do. And, and regardless of the outcome of the, it's going to get kicked up to the Supreme Court. And I, I don't think it, it's not going to matter. Um, it's not extraordinarily likely to matter to the Supreme Court, I think, what the lower court ruling was. This is, we're no right. longer in the territory where they're likely to say, well, you know, we're not gonna overturn a, you know, we wanna let let the matter be, like, right. I, I don't think they're gonna, especially for yeah. this public policy question. Right, and the administration might be okay with the mandate getting, getting knocked down. Like, the goal of it was to increase right. uptake of the vaccine. Uh, and so a lot of it will depend on whether, whether this little tiny uptick we're seeing now is like a, the beginning of a new wave or just a little bump on the way yeah. back to a recovery. I, I was, uh, I read a fascinating, uh, the sort of related subject, COVID-19 in general, a uh, great post from uh, Scott Alexander, Slate Star Codex, mm -hmm. now goes by a different name, has a great, very informative uh, substack on ivermectin. And he looked at all of the studies and he said, you know, this study is really no good, which shouldn't be counted. This one is no good, it shouldn't be counted. This one is okay. He looked at all of them and uh, agrees that there was a, a mild, very, very, very slightly uh, positive result for ivermectin. 
But he, that, but he, he posits, and this is just his theory, is that he, it was most positive in the studies that are in places like Bangladesh, India, et cetera. I he think I thinks, know where you're going with this. He, what he thinks is the, there are more intestinal worms mm-hmm. in, in, that, in those areas of the world. And if you have worms, your body is going to do a worse job fighting off COVID. Sure. So he thinks that ivermectin did help indirectly in those areas because it it kills the worms, and then and, and then those people then your are more likely can focus on COVID. Exactly. Yeah. So that ex, that explains that yes, it did like help. Why, why were tests that showing some efficacy in Bangladesh, but n- not showing eff- efficacy in first world? And that will yeah. be the reason why. It's very very persuasive. Long, many many thousands were posts. Very interesting and right. and. Uh, Worth, worth checking out. And the, the one reason I never got too terribly worked up about this is, except for when people were taking the actual horse pace, like right. when there was that multi-week period where people were actually going to veterinary stores right. because doctors right. wouldn't prescribe Not Joe Rogan. But Joe uh, Rogan did not. Joe right. Rogan had a doctor who prescribed right. him ivermectin. And if he had worms, it knocked those worms <laughs> right. out. But, uh, you know, there were people who were like, actually, and, and, and there was a run on, you know, the products that actual, uh, you know, people that worked with horses and dogs and others yeah. needed. That was a problem. But the reason I never had a problem with, with doctors and other people, you know, is prescribing this is like, the, it's, it's a well-known uh, medication and it doesn't have, you know, tremendous side effects. Now, the... Right. Uh, if you're taking the, the human consumption you're, version. If you're taking yeah. the human one. The animal one was, was creating all sorts of disgusting problems for yes. people. And you can go right. in the Reddit ivermectin thread and, right. and read about those. But you're not going to want to eat anytime you know, <laughs> within this multi-hour vicinity of that. Uh, so right, and, and and I'm glad that and you know more people, you know, in Bangladesh, and in places that have uh, you know that that have a lot of you know worms worms should be getting more of this. So right. to the extent that it, that those people may, might have come out of it healthier than they went into it. Yeah. Although uh, you you don't want COVID because you don't know what the long-term implications right. are. Right. I just thought it was very, very yeah, interesting no, that kind of re- s- solution, an elegant solution to the, to that, the ivermectin. That room. is really interesting. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, coming up next, we'll tell you what's on our radar. Stick around for that. 